Refining in aqua regia is a simple and easy procedure, but like anything new, it can be a little intimidating, especially since you are working with gold. Don't worry. Even if you screw up massively, the only way to lose your gold is to literally throw it away. Just take your time, follow the instructions, and you'll do fine. And if you have any questions, just contact Tech Support. They will be happy to help you. And, unlike me, they are actual, real people. The Aqua Regia refining process is quite simple. There are four basic steps. Dissolve your metal in an Aqua Regia solution. Remove any undissolved solids from the solution. Convert the dissolved gold into particles by adding a selective chemical, leaving all the other metals dissolved. Recover the gold particles from the solution. 100% recovery with zero losses is typical. And typical purity is at least 99.95%. Parts include Reaction chamber Base with spot plate Basket and filter pouch Precipitation cap Treated activated charcoal Non-toxic chemicals Measuring cup Dissolution cap. Drip wheel. Pipettes. Scrubber. Measuring spoons. Stir rod. Test solutions. This video instruction is for electronic waste that has been trimmed, but not clipped. In other words, more plastic and ceramic than metal. If your e-scrap is either entirely composed of metal, or almost entirely metal, then you will find that the instructions for refining jewelry, nuggets, etc., is more suitable for refining your scrap. Dissolving your metal. The first step is to dissolve your metal. For this, you will need hydrochloric or muriatic acid, MX3 concentrate, water, an empty one gallon bottle. Base. Scrubber with charcoal. Reaction chamber, with basket, pouch, and cap. And, of course, your e-scrap. The refining of electronic scrap is slightly different than the refining of other gold-bearing materials, because more solution is required just to cover the metal than is required to dissolve the metal. Consequently, to use your chemicals in the most efficient and economical way possible, it is best to dissolve several batches of scrap, before proceeding to the precipitation of your gold. In other words, add your scrap to the chamber, dissolve the metal content, remove the undissolved plastic and ceramic material. Then load the chamber with more scrap. Continue to do this until the acid is spent, and can no longer dissolve additional metal. Add the fingers, chips, and other e-scrap. The fingers should not be stacked against each other. Arrange them in a haphazard manner, so that the acid has no trouble reaching, and then dissolving, the gold. Iking Aqua Regia Traditionally, aqua regia has been a combination of hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. However, in the shore aqua regia system, the nitric acid has been completely eliminated and has been replaced with the much less toxic MX3. This reduces the fumes by about 90 to 95 percent. But, since you will still be working with hydrochloric acid, you will want to both formulate and then add the aqua regia, to the chamber, under either very good ventilation, or out of doors. Add the contents of a one pound packet of MX3 to an empty one gallon bottle. Add about 300 milliliters, or one and a quarter cups, of warm water, to the bottle. This will dissolve the MX3. Give the MX3 a few moments to dissolve, and then add one half bottle, that's two quarts, 
of hydrochloric acid to the bottle containing the MX3. You've just made aqua regia. Aqua regia has a very short shelf life and will begin to deteriorate within about a week, so it's best to use it before then. Add aqua regia to your reaction chamber. Fill the chamber to a height of about 1 to 2 inches below the top of the basket. Replace the cap and bring the chamber back inside. Then reconnect the hose to the scrubber. Typical dissolving time is about 10 to 30 minutes. However, dissolving time may vary considerably. This is primarily due to temperature. For every decrease in temperature of 20 degrees Fahrenheit, it will take twice as long for the metal to dissolve. Once the gold has dissolved off the boards and chips, it's time to dump those parts and then replace them with fresh electronic scrap. This is generally done outside or under excellent ventilation. Disconnect the cap from the scrubber and then bring the chamber, drip wheel, rubber gloves, a bucket and fresh electronic scrap outside. Remove the cap and lift out the basket. Placing the drip wheel between the basket and the chamber will support the basket as the solution drains into the chamber, leaving all undissolved solids behind in the pouch. When the solution has finished dripping into the chamber, dump the contents of the basket into a plastic bucket. After you have completed the refining process, you can pick through this material to remove and re-refine any parts that may have some undissolved gold on them. You can now fill your basket with fresh electronic scrap. Slowly, lower the basket into the chamber. Replace the cap and bring the chamber back inside. Reconnect the scrubber and continue the refining process. Continue this process of adding fresh scrap dissolving the metal, and then dumping the cleaned scrap, until the solution is spent, and is no longer effective in dissolving more gold. With the dissolving process now complete, it's time to precipitate the gold. For this process you will need your reaction chamber and solution, precipitation cap, quadratic precipitant, and urea. The first step is to neutralize any free nitrogen by adding a small amount of urea. You only need to add a pinch of urea. Though adding more will do no harm. In the very rare circumstance where the urea fizzes when it enters the water, add more urea. The urea kills any free nitrogen ions in the solution, preventing the gold from redissolving. Now, add one ounce or two level tablespoons of quadratic precipitant for every ounce of dissolved metal. Quadratic precipitant is what is called a selective precipitant. It converts just the gold back into particle form. All other metals will remain dissolved. Put your precipitation cap in place and bring the reaction chamber back inside. Connect the scrubber hose and then plug in the immersion heater. The heater will gradually warm the solution to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, activating the quadratic precipitant. Typical precipitation time is between 1 and 2 hours. As the metal precipitates, the solution may change color. This is just the reaction of the quadratic with the dissolved copper and has no effect upon the gold. Testing to ensure that no gold remains dissolved. When precipitation has concluded, no gold remains dissolved in solution. We will now test the solution to ensure that precipitation has finished. Remove the rubber stopper and take a small sample of the solution using the pipette. 
place a couple of drops of the solution on the spot plate. Now, add a few drops of precious metal test solution to the sample. If any gold remains dissolved in solution, the sample would immediately turn purple or black. This test is exceptionally effective. Even 4 parts of gold per million parts of solution will cause the sample to change color. If you see a color change to purple or black, give the solution more time to complete precipitation, and then test again. You can test as often as you like. However, be sure to rinse the pipette thoroughly, inside and out, after each test, to ensure that you obtain a clean and accurate result. Squeezing the pipette bulb repeatedly, while its tip is immersed in water, will force water, in, and out, of the pipette, cleaning its inner surface. When the test yields no color change to purple or black, then no gold remains dissolved in solution. And it's time to decant the solution, and rinse the precipitated gold mud. Rinsing Having confirmed that no gold remains dissolved in solution, it's time to recover your precipitated gold. Bring outside, your reaction chamber, a plastic bucket, and a gallon of water. Remove the cap from the reaction chamber. Decant, that is, pour off slowly, the solution. Because quadratic precipitates large heavy particles of gold. These particles should remain in the bottom of your reaction chamber when you decant the acid. However, you should save this solution for a while. If for any reason, you feel that you have inadvertently poured off some particles of gold with the solution, they will be at the bottom of your bucket, awaiting retrieval. Once all the acid has been decanted, you will see brown colored gold particles in the bottom of the reaction chamber. The color of the particles can be anything from a very dark brown to a light pale brown. Often it is a combination of browns, commonly with yellow or goldish colored particles mixed in. The color will vary depending upon the shape and size of the particles, but will have no bearing upon the purity of your gold. Add a small amount of ammonia. Just enough to cover the gold mud. The ammonia will quickly change from clear, to blue, as it reacts with the dissolved copper that is clinging to your gold particles. Decant the ammonia. You can pour the ammonia into the bucket. However, if you do that, please be careful. The ammonia will react with the acid, and it may spit. Add water. You can use either tap water or bottled water. Fill the chamber within about 2 to 3 inches from the top. That's about 2 liters of water. Then give the particles a few minutes to settle to the bottom of the chamber. When the particles have settled, decant the solution, taking care that all the particles remain in the chamber, and are not inadvertently poured off with the water. Bring your chamber, back indoors. We're going to test, to ensure that no dissolved impurities are clinging to the gold mud. Tilt your chamber. The small amount of water in your gold mud, will drip down, puddling in the bottom corner of your chamber. Using your pipette, take a sample of the water. Place a drop or two, on the spot plate. Add a drop of ammonia test liquid. This test will ensure that no dissolved impurities will remain clinging to your gold mud. If you see any change in color, even the palest shade of blue, then rinse again with water, and repeat the ammonia test. When the test results are negative, that is, when no color change occurs, your gold will be at least 99.95% pure. Give the gold mud a final rinse with about a cup, of distilled water. This rinse will wash away any minerals or other impurities that might be in your tap water. Before removing the gold from the chamber, 
give it a chance to dry thoroughly. When wet, the gold will stick to the sides of the container, making it difficult to remove. However, when dry as the Sahara, the gold will pour out like sand. If you don't want to wait for your gold mud to air dry, you can quickly dry it with a hot plate. To do this, first rinse the gold into a beaker or any glass container that is made for heating. Be sure to rinse with distilled water, not tap water. Turn on the hot plate. Heat until the water has thoroughly evaporated, and the gold is as dry as the desert. Melting. If you are not familiar with melting gold, it's probably preferable to have a jeweler melt it for you. However, if you choose to do your own melting, please note the following. Use either a new crucible, or one that has only been used for melting pure gold. Use of any other crucible will contaminate your gold. Flux your crucible before using, to seal the crucible's pores. If you have any questions, regarding melting or any other part of the refining process, please feel free to contact Shaw. We will be happy to help you. Remember, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask.